Well, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is another Wednesday night of our virtual Bible class here at the Friendship Baptist Church, where our motto is, we're not a popular church, we're a powerful church, powerful through the word, the worship and the discipleship. For they will not come, they must be brought. And we are excited and elated that you have tuned in to our broadcast on tonight. Do us a favor tonight, tag a friend, tag a family member, tag a co-worker, and most importantly, uh, let's get on the line and worship the Lord tonight in our time of word. We thank God because God has been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We thank God because God has shown favor to us. Uh, he did not allow our sins of yesterday to dictate our today, and for that we are thankful and we're grateful that God has brought us and kept us on this side of the grave. That many people have had or had plans to be here this evening, today, but we thank God that God has saw fit to keep us here up until this time, and we're grateful to the Lord. Listen, uh, we want to say, uh, let's remember to keep our mother Harmon in prayer. Uh, she has not been in service for a couple of weeks uh, due to a her falling, uh, but we talked with her, and she is doing well, and we're going to her we're going to continue to pray for her, that the Lord will heal her body, and we want to remember the rest of our sick and shut in. I want to remember all of our members who we cannot physically touch, amen, but we understand and we want you to know that we're praying for you, that we love you, we miss you, and we cannot wait until you can come back through those doors, amen, that we can hug and kiss on your neck, amen, because pastor love you. Listen, uh, this coming Sunday is our in-person worship, amen, you can join us via our YouTube, or you can join us in person, amen, we are having a phenomenal worship experience, uh, if you have not had the opportunity to go back and use Sunday's uh, broadcast, uh, we want to say thank you to all of those who donated, amen, for the Thanksgiving drive, amen, we were able to give, amen, and donate a substantial nice amount, amen, so that families can, we can be able to uh, feed families, amen, um, this past Sunday we brought in and raised, amen, donated rather, uh, $1,000, amen, and we want to say thank you to all our friendship and those who partnered with us, amen, that we were able to, we will be able to uh, feed those who are the less fortunate, amen, and be a blessing to them. Let's go right into the word of the Lord tonight. We want to go right to the word of the Lord tonight, right out of the book of the gospel according to St. Matthew, St. Matthew's gospel, and comes out of Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, only one verse, and then we'll teach from the rest. Very, very familiar passage of scripture, but something the Lord showed us that he wants us to uh, give clarity to, amen, as we have been uh, doing this month of teaching. We've been teaching on working. Continue to work. Don't stop working. Uh, so we're right here at Matthew, the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, verse 15. Tonight, we give honor and deference to Jesus, uh, number one, to our deacon ministry, Deacon Warren Henderson, Deacon Owens, amen, our um, associate, amen, Dr. Cheryl, amen, and to all of our mothers and saints and friends, uh, we honor all of you tonight. Matthew, chapter 25. Out of the King James Version, Matthew 25, verse 15. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. I want to read it out of the English Standard Version. It says, to one he gave five talents, and to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. 
Then he went his way. I want to uh, come from and teach from this thought tonight. Work with what you have. Work with what you have. It is in it is in the gospel according to Matthew chapter twenty five, uh, roughly around verses fourteen to thirty, that it compares to the kingdom of heaven to have to, to, to the kingdom of heaven to have three servants of a wealthy master. Each was given resources resources rather the masters the masters uh, assets. Uh, and commanded to do business with them while he was away. Two of these to the servants applied uh, uh, applied the supplied funds and doubled the sums of money uh, the master had left for them, and they they were richly rewarded when he came back. The third servant buries the money and does nothing with it out of supply, a uh, supposed fear of the master. The master condemns his laziness and evil, casting him out. Jesus' servant must work diligently for him while waiting for his return. Let me say that again. We, as Jesus' servants, must work diligently for him while we are waiting for his return. Not wasting the talent and the time and the resources which they or which God has been afforded to us. When we look here, when we look here in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus here is telling another story. He's given a parable about how his followers, we as his followers, we as his people should live as we await his return in this in in in, in other parables we have uh, he he emphasizes being prepared as a lifestyle according to matthew twenty four verses fifty twenty five and thirteen but the idea is that believers we as believers should never become complacent or assume that jesus' return is a distinct event. This new parable will emphasize the need to also make the most of our time for his sake and while we wait. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it is of our duty, it is of our job that we make sure we do not waste time, that make sure that we do not waste what God has given to us. This this uh, parable is familiar. A wealthy landowner is going away and leaving some servants in charge of his possessions. Now, Jesus adds that what he is giving is what modern people would refer to as cash, meaning physical currency. He gives three distinct different amounts to do three different servants, five talents to one two to one, uh, and one talent to the other. The original word here, talent, refers to a unit of weight, applies to money. A talent it was a considerable amount of some precious metal, anywhere from 58 to 80 pounds. The value of a talent, a talent uh, could very widely depend on whether the metal was gold, silver, or something else. Regardless, any metal with a monetary value would make a talent a considerable sum. Scholars, some scholars speculate that the standard talent of Jesus' era was worth about 6,000 demerics. Since a 
a common laborer was paid one demerit per uh, per day for work. A single talent represented 20 years of working class wages. So one, two, and five talents would all have been made for uh, enormous amounts of money. But Jesus says that the man gave the different amount to each servant according to their ability. Put a, I want you to underline that and I'll come back to it. He, he, he gives them different amounts to each servant according to their ability. The point is not merely for the master to hand them coins and have those same coins handed back. The master expected the servants to apply these resources so that they would grow. Let me underline this. Let's go back to the underlining point here is that the master gives them. Jesus says that the master gives them according to their ability, according to what they will be able to handle. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I know that sometimes it feels like Others have more than you. It might feel like or seem like others have uh, ha have the ability to maximize everything that they touch, but because it's because they can, they have the ability to hold it. Be don't you ever, uh, don't you ever downplay what God has given to you and think that it's not enough. No, He gives it to you according to your ability what you can handle and the bible says that he gives it to them but he expected them to not to just give it back but he expected them to grow and not even just grow but expected to be better and bigger than it was when he gave it to them but here it is the bible says that the parable continues and says that the message will become clear Clear that God here, the Bible says that now the man, he comes back and the Bible says the one who had the five talents turned it into ten. Those, the one that had uh, the, 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 the one that had the two talents turned it into five. And the one who uh, the one who had the one did nothing with it. And the Bible says uh, he felt like he did not have his one was not enough. And I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I want to tell you this is not the season for you to downplay what God has given to you. No, if God has given you one talent, work it. If he's given you five, work it. If he's given you ten, whatever he has to given unto you, it is your responsibility to maximize it. It's not for you to bury it in the ground, but it's for you to pick it up and grow it. It is for you to take the talent, take what he has given to you and work it until you cannot work it no more. And I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but you have to understand, I don't care what one has over me. I don't care what they seem to be prospering more. No, God has, you have a greater responsibility because he's given you one and you can work that one until that one has been worn out. But Jesus says that the man gave the different amount to each servant according to their ability. And some might feel tonight that are watching the live and might be watching the replay. You might feel like you are inadequate because you don't have what others have. Sometime we, we mama said it like this, sometimes we bite off more than we can chew. Because here it is. Sometime 
when we bite off more than what we can chew, it makes us even stuffed and full, overly stuffed, because we didn't have room for it. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you that while we are in this 11th month in the year of 2023, and while we are in this year that we are dealing right now, and we only a month away from stepping in, almost a month stepping into a whole new year, it's time now that we maximize what God has given to us. It's time that we maximize the ability that God has given to us. Here it is. As the parable continues, the message becomes clear that God distributes abilities and resources to people on earth as he sees fit, as he sees fit, and expect them to diligently use their resources for godly purpose. He is expecting us that God distributes the abilities and resources to people that he feels and knows that has the ability to make it happen, that has the ability to make it grow. And I don't know who it is tonight that is watching this, that I want to tell you tonight, God has given you the ability to make it work. Don't you dare think that what you have is not enough. That what you have is enough. Because God has, God, as I said, God has the ability to hand down to those he knows and feel like will get the job done. That the Bible says he put no more on you than you can bear. That you can bear it. That you can take it. And no matter what you go through in life, that remember this one thing tonight. Work with what you have. Don't 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 let your do not allow your eyes to drift over and become envious of what others may see, you may see from others. That we have to work the field that has been given to us. Your hands can only hold but so much. Stop expecting that you can hold all of this stuff because apparently at one moment or another, you will drop something. But allow God the time to show God that God, if you give me whatever you give me, I'm not going to be like the one that you gave the one talent to and I'm going to bury. No, I'm going to work it until I can't work it anymore. I'm speaking not just to people of faith, but I'm speaking to those who are seeking and saying, God, I, I, I have a business mindset. I'm looking for those who has a kingdom mindset, those who, who want more of God. That whatever you need, whatever you want from God, I want to tell you tonight, Work with what you have. Because if, if you be faithful over what you have now, God will one day make you rule over many. Because God is just testing us to see what we will really do with what we have. And some of us tonight have failed the test. Some of us has... Uh, been in the same place because we feel like 
I have a college degree. I have an education. I have this. I have that. And why God, I feel like I can't. You've given me less. Sometime, less is a blessing because you don't have you don't have to worry about all of this other stuff. All you have to do is work with what God has given to you tonight. And I don't know who it is tonight, but I want to tell you that if you hear this word of God tonight, I promise you that this word tonight, if you apply this word, if you will apply this word to your faith and allow your faith to work, I promise you, that you'll see God working. You'll see God working even the more. That as you look at it, that if if I apply, if you apply this word tonight, the same God, I don't care if you gave me one. I don't care if you gave me five. I don't care if you gave me two. I don't care if you give me three. Whatever you give me, God, I'm going to work it until... Took with the best of my ability. Because I believe God is going to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we can ask or even think. And tonight I want to tell you, work with what you have. Listen, we're thankful for the word of God tonight. Wanted to share just the sentiments of God's heart. That I believe that God is speaking in this season. Telling us continue to work. Don't get complacent. Don't get fearful. Don't get in our mind that we feel like we're not valuable. But I want us to apply the word of God to our lives. That things will work out for our good. Listen, we're praying tonight. That, um, we hope and pray that this word has blessed you tonight as it has blessed us. Uh, we want you to remember once again, the offset, as we said earlier, to remember those who are sick and shut in and remember, amen, as we can ready to come up on this Thanksgiving holiday, that uh, we remember, amen, to be thankful for what the Lord has given unto us, amen. It may not be steak and lobster, it may not be filet mignon or whatever, but if you have a roof over your head, food in the table, on the table, clothes on your back, and a God that wakes you up every day. And you can thank God. You don't have to wait to Thanksgiving to give thanks, but you can give thanks right now. Listen, we love you, and may the blessing of the Lord be upon you is our prayer. If someone tonight does not know God, does not know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, I don't want to close this live out tonight without you accepting God. If you are a sinner and you need to be saved, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I need to be saved. I admit, I believe that you died and rose again on the third day. I confess and make you Lord of my life. Father, I want you to come into my heart, my mind, and my soul. Today, my will becomes your will. Today, my life becomes, I put my life into your hands. And today, I confess that I am saved. If you said that prayer today, you are saved and welcome to the family of God. The second walk is to get into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. And I want to offer you Friendship Baptist Church. That Our motto is we're not a popular church, we're a powerful church. We are powerful through the word, the worship, and the discipleship. For they will not come, they must be brought. And we believe that it is our due diligence that we have to go to the hedges and highways and compel men to come to Christ. Come see, come hear, amen, a man of God. Listen, we love you, and may the blessing of the Lord be upon you as our prayer. Until next time, I want to tell you, use what you have. And remember, we love you, and may the blessing of the Lord be upon you as our prayer. Go in peace. God bless you.